Oh, come on. I recently reviewed this AlphaCool Ice Bear Pro Aurora 360mm CPU cooler on a mighty Threadripper, and I'm sure the editor will be kind enough to put a link below so you can check that review. However, AlphaCool also sent me this Ice Wolf 2 360 GPU cooler which has an RTX 3080 block. So I'm gonna take my Palette RTX 3080, which currently has a regular AlphaCool GPU block on it, remove this block, install the kit contained in this box, and we're gonna put all this hardware in a case. And this is where we bring in my old friend, the Corsair IQ 7000X RGB. Oh, come on. A case that can accommodate two 360mm radiators without any difficulty whatsoever. Welcome back. My chosen power supply is this Seasonic Prime Platinum 1300 watt. I've got a 360 rad with 320 fans on the CPU cooler and the same on the GPU cooler, which means the 3140 fans at the front have to be removed. I can't have those, say, pushing through the rad and then have the 120s pulling. Uh, because the mounting screws just ain't going to work out. So I need to pull those out. So let's have a little flurry of activity. Do you gasp in awe and admiration at my work ethic? Why not click and subscribe, ring the bell, head over to Discord, look at us on Facebook, Twitter, any form of social media you've ever heard of. Kit Guru will be there. As with my AlphaCool Ice Bear review, we're using the Zeus ROG Zenith Extreme motherboard. Processor Threadripper 2990WX. We've got a bunch of G-Skill Flare X memory. And beneath that cover is a WD Black M.2 SSD. Motherboard assembly in the Corsair. It's a big motherboard. It's a huge case. And despite the size of the case, I still can't install the motherboard until I remove that cable management plate. Overlaps the edge of the EATX motherboard. I think that's done the trick. I think we've got enough space for the two alpha cool systems to go in with ease. It occurs to me that as I'm using six alpha cool fans in the roof and the front, and I'm removing the three Corsair fans from the front, I don't need the Corsair RGB control unit, do I? Opens up a bunch of space at the rear. And I guess it makes sense to also remove the Corsair fan at the rear and install this alpha cool fan as I can daisy chain the RGB to the other fans. So it's black rather than white, but it looks the part. So alpha cool fans all the way for this build. Off with the top radiator rack. And we install the CPU cooler. Let's go. Thus, I can't remember whether during my review of the 7000 case, I pointed out the radiator racks have front marked. They also have these location pins that drop into notches in the chassis. So you offer up the assembly and it drops very specifically into place. Provided you've got your rad in the correct location. Let's see if that will do the trick. Yeah. Mind you, there's so much space above the motherboard in this case that pretty much anywhere would do. I could pull the rad back. God, that's a big heavy block. Arctic MX-5. Look at that. And then 
on with the block. And tighten down the securing nuts. And remember kids, fingers only, no tools. That's the Alpha Cool way. That's the easy half of the job. Next, it's the graphics. The Alpha Cool Ice Wolf 2 360 costs £234, so it's a chunk more money than the CPU could have put the two together. Almost exactly £400 for both cooling systems combined. That's my graphics card with its current block on. So we get three fans, just as you'd expect. Here we have the radiator hoses, two quick brakes. There we have the block with pump hoses, two quick brakes. In this world of PCI Express Gen 4 hardware and the problems we've had with riser cables, I've got no interest in using a vertically installed graphics card with a riser until we're absolutely certain those problems with Gen 4 have been nailed. So the graphics card is going to go horizontally in the Corsair case. So the pump actually gives you something to look at. Right, time to pull off this uh, block and install this assembly here and because I have the quick brakes, reach for some kitchen towel, I can break the unions. We'll see how much liquid comes out. That's actually better than I expected. A couple of drops is absolutely fine, more than that gets a bit terrifying. Slightly more, but still way less than the teaspoon, he says, getting some on his hands. Right, that means I'm able to park the radiator assembly and I can concentrate on installing the block, albeit with the pump and the trailing hoses, rather than that whole caboose together. So off with the original block, on with the new assembly. I need to rest my graphics card on something while I remove the back plate and the block and a pair of alpha cool boxes of fittings seems appropriate look at that made for the job With the radiator assembly at the front, feed the fan and RGB cables to the room, try and avoid destroying anything. And let's connect up the hoses for the Ice Wolf. I think I need to reroute that one. That ought to be ready to fire up. And there we have it. 
a full-on RGB experience with liquid cooling on both CPU and GPU. I think I have to run some temperature testing just to see if everything's working fine and dandy, but it certainly looks the part. Running Cinebench R23 and TimeSpy simultaneously pulling 690 watts at the wall socket. CPU package at the moment is TDI 58.5 degrees C, GPU temperature 51. Let's just pull TimeSpy to the front to confirm it is indeed going. And there's Cinebench which is running for six minutes, has got four minutes to go before it actually does the run. Cinebench run is about to start. CPU T die is now 61 degrees. GPU temp is 52 degrees. The fans are ramped up. They're running at 2200 RPM. And that's it. The run is finished. That's temperature testing done with the CPU and GPU systems separate. But of course, the whole point of the Ice Wolf Ice Bear quick breaks is that you can link your systems together or indeed if you have a separate radiator with quick breaks you can add that in for extra cooling but I can combine the ice wolf and the ice bear so let's do that kitchen towel to hand because I am bound to have some coolant going in the wrong places and I want it to stay out of the power supply in fact out of everything Not bad, but liquid inside a PC just fills me with terror. Still, a few drips here and there, easily caught, no problems. Now, according to the manual, you cannot connect the loops wrongly. There's no way of doing it wrong, put things together. If they connect, all good. So let's put that to the test and plug it all back together. Hmm, well, I've certainly got enough hose. That's for blooming short. So out of CPU, into GPU out of GPU. Did I need to disconnect this in the first place? Probably not. Uh, let's put that back as it was. So that goes to rad, out of rad to other rad. I actually have no idea what to do about this at the moment, but there we go. We have a combined Ice Wolf Ice Bear loop. It's a huge case. That's a lot of tubing. Uh, anyway, let's get it running, see what happens. For the second run with the combined cooling loops, I've gone full rainbow with the RGB. Same deal again, Cinebench R23 with Time Spy stress test. Ambience crept up one degree to 21 and a little bit. Wall socket power draw still 690 to 700 watts. We're five minutes in, the CPU T die is now at 58, the GPU is at 55. It'll be interesting to see whether or not combining the loops maintains CPU temp below 60 or not, or whether it draws GPU up a tad. Remember, this is a 32 core thread ripper. It draws the same power as my RTX 3080. We're about to start the Cinebench run. CPU temperature is indeed 61. Fan speed is still 2200 RPM. GPU temperature is higher than it was before at 58 degrees. We're starting the Cinebench run in a moment. Ambient is now 22, so two degrees warmer than previous. CPU temp is the same 61, so effectively two degrees cooler. And GPU temperature is 59 degrees and we're done and there we have it the build is complete the job is done this is a sponsored build rather than a review so i don't have to offer any particular views but i'm going to offer two views one is the hoses they're very long this is a huge case and yet just look at it so a smaller case would be 
possibly problematic. The other thing is, this is a GeForce RTX block. You get green writing on the pump, uh, whereas everything else is RGB. I've got it on breathing blue, and that's a bit of a clash visually. On the other hand, were we to fix the problem with PCI Express Gen 4 risers and have a vertical GPU mount, well, it might be a completely different story because the hoses would be going different places. You wouldn't be seeing so much of that. You'd be seeing more of that and so on and so forth. That's just my food for thought. It would also be a win, 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 I think, if I was keeping count correctly. So, job done, video finished.